What's up, guys? Welcome to the partner. It's a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partner. This is your boy Tiz, and I'm always along with the other third of the partners, the Padawan here, and I am along with Dramatic Pause. Face, damn it. <laughs> Yay. The trifecta is here. Um, by the time this comes out, 122 will be out. So y'all will have uh, understood that uh, I'm kind of coming back from a mini sabbatical that was unplanned. Um, mm. this episode. So <laughs> we're all back together again, guys. Um, together again. Reunited. I, Devil LP, we all, I'm sorry. Wu-Tang. To the pod squad, I'm very uh, apologetic. Uh, my bad for last week. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, when the nigga fell asleep. <laughs> we got to tell what happened, man. God damn. I'm sorry. I, I just break the fourth wall. I'm sorry. I snitched the fourth wall. Just, just, just threw me all the way under the butt. Well, as the as the wheels roll over me, yes, I had uh, <laughs> dozed off mid uh, episode. And, uh, thank God. It was a long week. All right, try back. My two bros were able to uh, pull together. Still an amazing show. Even the topic that just kind of came out of nowhere, which is a uh, dope. So we can still talk about Takashi if you want to. Yeah, we, we got some. We got some clip. Uh, this shit coming in. Uh, yeah, but fuck all that. How y'all doing? Man? How y'all doing this? I'm happy to be I alive. Maintain the maintain. Definitely happy to be alive. I am floating on cloud nine. Uh, uh, yeah, this has been probably like the worst of week. You kind of low on the audio. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, there am we I, go. There we go. Am I low? Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Am I low. Is that yeah. better? I mean, well, as soon as you got up to the mic, pause. Got, got it. It was more proximity than anything. Understood. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, this has been an amazing week, bro. Um, Happy to be alive. Yeah, like, um, this has probably been the best week I've had in a long time, honestly. Like, <coughs> ain't been my best week, but I'm happy. Man, I, yeah, I'm, I'm real joyful. I'm about to be a dope day. Um, just learning how to smell the flowers in life, and they smell great. They smell fucking great. Oh, yeah, man. That don't smell like shit. You know, fertilizer. You do not smell like boo boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> you do not smell like doo doo doo. Yeah, it's getting close to spring, you know, cutting grass and all that other shit. People putting fertilizer down, flowers, picket fences. That might be your uh, neck of the woods, but let me stop. I'm fucking people up. I'm out of my neck of the woods now. I'm in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, you already talk about that. Pat on that door commercial. <laughs> Doing an ad for wood. I said, My neck of the woods. Pause. Oh, wood. Pause. Pause. I said, My neck of. Y'all know the damn phrase. This nigga face, man. He won't let shit. <laughs> it ain't a damn thing. You will not be able to breathe. <laughs> so you saying your wound will make him not be able to breathe? Nah, 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 nigga, nah. Continue. Just, just, just that you know, happened. I ain't gonna be able to save that shit. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! Mm mm mm. Like, that's what we thought this week. What the world? Needs oh, that's right. He do got the weaponry. He got the weaponry. He got the sounds and shit. Oh, okay. All right. I'm back, bitches. Let me get my weed. Oh, yeah. I need some weed. Let's do this thing, man. What are everybody smoking tonight? I know I got this gelato pack. You got the same pack I got pack? Yes, pretty much so. Okay, we got that gelato pack. Uh, Faith, what you smoking up? 
Ah, uh, some good ass indica. Dun, dun, dun. Somebody's going to sleep. I put you in that deep sleep, baby. That deep sleep. Shout out Dusty Rose for having the best promos ever, man. God damn, his promos. Speaking of which, deep sleep, baby. The speaking deep. of Dusty Rhodes, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns, the WrestleMania is this weekend. Let's go, Cody. Yo, can I just say the way Cody flexed up and picked Braun Strowman big ass up like that? Yeah, that was, that was as a as a man that's like more slender built like Cody Rhodes. Like, even if I get up to my bulkiest, it's gonna be like in the lower two hundred, right? But when you pick him up 300 pounds, I know your core muscle. And that nigga recently had a torn pet. Uh-huh. So, like, the like Cody Rhodes is turning into, like, the best wrestler in the world. Slowly but surely. Like, he's giving... Uh, Good archetype. He's giving, he's giving uh, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson and Kenny Omega and... what uh, What's the dude's name? Uh, Okada Takashi. The dude that be having six-star matches and shit with Kenny Omega. Uh from uh New Japan. Uh, he like he like one of the great his, he like one of the greatest champions ever had and shit. Damn, Shinsuke Nakamura? No, hell no. <laughs> I mean, he's good, but he ain't no nah, this dude I'm talking about like he like a walking he like a walking five to six star match. He's oh, shit. Hold on, I bet you face no. Hey face. Ew. Ew. Hey, what's the uh, what's the Japanese wrestler name that be having them five and six star matches with Kenny Omega all the time? He like one of the greatest uh New Japan champions ever. He's like t- no, Okada Takashi Takashi Tanahichi Ohada or something like that. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna try to Google. <clears throat> yeah. mm. I don't know. Off the top of my head. Kazuchika Okada. That's his name. I would have never guessed that name. Kazuchika or been o- able to pronounce it. If you ever look at he like so when Dave Meltzer, you know Dave Meltzer the dude that do the star range for wrestling uh, matches and shit, right? So uh uh-huh. like one of the first, if not the first six star match he ever gave was to him and Kenny Omega. Uh-huh. So like but yeah, but like Cody Rose is getting up there like that. He deserves to get the championship off of Roman Reigns. If anybody deserves to break this, <laughs> Cody is the dude to do it. He got, he got to a, him he enough, got a to like, enough story to go along with it, too. Correct. Like, correct. like everything, everything kind of lines up. He got the pedigree. He got the the storyline that fits. He got the people's, like, actually pushing. Like, it's, it's uh-huh. all the fans are getting behind him more games. Okay. So it's like his championship run could actually stick. You know what I mean? There's a lot of storylines you can go. He's a very versatile person, so if he's the champion, it's a lot of different types of styles of matches you can have with him that can go, whereas Roman Reigns is kind of he's kind of one speed. Cody can go a lot of different places with it. Uh-huh. Storyteller, so like your lead-ups to WrestleManias and pay-per-views is going to be good. So like I think the upside of ha- of taking the belt off Roman and putting it on Cody and like letting Cody carry the flag for a minute, especially right now, <laughs> WWE is seeing a resurgence. Like, I think it's, I think it fit. It makes sense. He, he's, he's the man of the people right now. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I like the bloodline. I'm not even gonna lie. The Usos is like, he is easily like my favorite tag team. Of all time, like they, everything is so smooth with them as far as they like the way they move. It seems like everything is a rhythm, even when they mess up, it just seems like they bounce back and just everything is on rhythm, on you know, point. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to think who is the other, but, but what I would say is like you don't have to stop, them. like you don't have to stop the bloodline aspect of things as far as their storyline. Mm-hmm. If you think about it. The championship on Roman is really not the main part of the storyline. The main part of the storyline is the interactions between between uh, members. And yeah. teams and he plays into it and him wanting to be a part of it. But the championship is more just like peripheral. So like their storyline is so not contingent upon anybody having a belt. It's more contingent upon them continuing to be a faction and how they interact. You know what I mean? They still keep the bloodline aspect. 
and keep that wonderful storyline going while at the same time pushing this new person that's like checking all your boxes. Like Cody Rose right now feels a lot like uh I'm trying to think compare it to maybe the closest thing I can think of is like maybe it's AJ Styles when he first came into WWE where like he's coming off of this like uh, but he kind of got like he got the he has the added thing of like I was here you 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 dick me and then I went off and started crazy thing. I'm the man everywhere else and then I come back and now I'm undeniable uh huh you know what I mean? So it is a little different, but like I, I don't I it's like so organic. Like you can't like he was gonna be a baby face no matter what. Like people was gonna fuck yeah. what just because of the story. Like he came back trying to be a heel, but like he's more like a man. he's more like a stone cold kind of like a not not to that extreme as far as hurt, like the way Stone Cold personified it, but the fact he's like an anti hero. He's not really bad or good, he's just kinda like you just gotta fuck with him. Him, like he, he yeah. real just his talk game pretty clean too. Yo, he got his daddy in him, yo. Okay, it's like, pretty clean, man. It's pretty clean. And it's, it's not pretty, exactly it's it's not like dusty road, but it's that we it's, that's the good thing about it. The good thing about it is not like dusty, it's wrong no, as him. Style, but it's but you can see the charisma of Dusty. Like, mm, you can see yeah, that. yeah. This this nigga, he got that gift of gab. Like he knows what to say when. Tell the story perfectly and to make the audience just get emotionally tricked and get feel like they're involved and like they're emotionally invested in with the story. And and I feel like that's an underrated thing, especially today in wrestling, because if you look at it like wrestling is so like there's no it's really hard to keep anything behind the curtain anymore. Everything is so out there. Everybody knows it's not it's scripted. Everybody knows it's scripted. Everybody knows these people as the real per- versions of themselves because of social media. So, like, to be able to still get people emotionally invested in any storyline in wrestling, is like, you have to be a phenomenal pro wrestler to be able to pull that off. So, like, I think you're the let's go, Cody. Cody Rose. Universal. Well, that was an unexpected reference, but I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, all this. Hard times, baby. Hard times. And I'm telling you, man, D- Dusty Rhodes is the goat <clears throat> of fucking promos, yo. Like, everybody got their favorites. You know, you got Ric Flair. The uh-huh. Rock is one of my favorites. But, like, Dusty Rhodes' ability to just be the everyman, like, Dusty had them promos. How about Hacksaw people. Jim Duggan? Man, you don't get the fuck out of here with that hoe. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you trying to hear that shit? Nigga talk like a goddamn caveman. <laughs> oh! Fuck out of here. Look like him too. <clears throat> <clears throat> like like goddamn. What's wrong with you, man? Nigga, the old mouth. Fuck you acting like that for coming out there like that. Get off the pills, nigga. Well, nowadays it might be meth. Yo, him and the bushwhackers, man. Oh, yeah. Niggas, bushwhackers. niggas want number some goddamn dope addicts that they done put out there as as gimmicks, nigga. You can give me the goddamn meth head and the coke addict. <coughs> they, they the old dirty bastards of wrestling. Show the crackhead from around the corner. That nigga about to go get some aluminum right now. About to go steal your pipe. He said about to get some aluminum. Oh, got some aluminum. Oh, I hate a hack. I hate it. Yo, I was one of them kids. I ask y'all niggas a question, man. Oh, go ahead. Uh-huh. <clears throat> What's the skit? like? Everybody got what they all think. Just a ge- geographically of what you know. What you think is the scariest place on earth? Geographically. Mm-hmm. The Mariana Trent. Okay. Yeah. Ain't I would say like Point Nemo. 
billions of gallons of water on top of you with unknown creatures that nobody's ever discovered, and you don't know how deep you're going to end up, and your body just getting pressed, depressed, depressed by the pressure of water, and then like weird glowing animals coming to feast on your body. And, yeah. I didn't expect that one. That's a great one. But I would go with Point Nemo. Okay. Middle of the fucking ocean. Middle of the ocean, furthest away from any point of land. Which ocean? Pacific? Southern Ocean. It's in the middle of the middle of the Southern Ocean, the furthest furthest point away from any point of land. But it's on top of the ocean. Like I, I could be on a boat to be a point of ocean. I'm at. But yeah, if you get that, <laughs> ain't no like. Like you gotta have supplies to get there. I could theoretically sail on out there and be in a boat at Point Nemo. I ain't trying to find out. I ain't trying to go out that bit. Yeah, I do that. I'm still in my boat. Wherever that place was with the motherfuckers that were like all red in that movie Green Inferno. Or red <laughs> Was the motherfucking um the cannibal ass uh indigenous people the motherfuckers um uh, crashed landed on their island and, and they hunted the motherfuckers down and shit that motherfucker is scary and they ate them ripped the leg off and shit put them niggas in the cage and shit yeah they they <laughs> that was, yeah that, that, that was that, a good that movie. motherfucker scary to me that was a good movie <clears throat> or oh, anywhere close to a volcano that was one of the best comedies that came out that year Should I you gotta get close. Some shit I can't control, I'll fuck with that, but I ain't scared of no human. I'll beat the shit out of one of them damn cannibals. But that damn volcano? Yeah, I ain't fucking with no lot. You got it there. I don't want no shit. It's some place. Hey, I, I forgot the name. Some place. It's only this place in the world that no, when the volcano erupts, it got blue lava. I forgot the name of the place. Mm. <clears throat> oh. Blue lava. Mm-hmm, blue lava. Yeah, blue lava. I'm going to Google it, and then I got one more place for y'all. Um, it's this place where people like go in Japan to commit suicide. Oh, wow. the is it the of Kawai Ijin in huh? Indonesia? Is it Kawai Ijin in Indonesia? If it's saying it's the only motherfucking place that is, they do it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's what I see. Kawai Ijin. K A W A eight I G E N I J E N. They also call it I P A Pi Baru, Blue Fire, Blue mm-hmm. Lava, Sulfur Fire. Oh. Yeah, that's what the fire is called. Yeah, the lava is called. That's crazy. It's one more. Uh, what's this place? I'm about to look it up right now. Well, but oh, I'm front. That should look hard. That should look like a goddamn uh. Like some LED strip. That's <laughs> crazy as a bit. How do you pronounce this? Y'all ever heard of this forest? <laughs> ha! Got he! I can't stand it. <laughs> uh, what is it? The forest in Japan. Yeah, that um, people say forest and shit like that. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a suicide. Or whatever. Both That's what um, one of them Paul they brothers they recorded to my doing it. Mm-hmm. What'd you say, Faith? One of them Paul brothers had recorded somebody that had committed suicide in the forest uh, a couple years back. Uh, that, that, Luke, cool. like, wait, like that, Logan Paul and, and Luke Paul? Like, yeah, Luke? one of them. The, oh. the, 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 tall, the tall, goofy one. Oh, yeah. That nigga on in yeah. WrestleMania, too. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Hold on. Jake Hold on. Paul. Hey, hey, I'm going to tell you this. He goofy, but that nigga's a wrestler. Like, yeah, I, he can. I expect him to be that good. At, like, he's a, actually a, a really good Yo, pro he, wrestler. So, like, that he, mother. Boy. Um, he has some moments every single time. Oh, that's still, well, Ricochet is still yeah, like. Yeah, that's the shit that I'm talking about. about. Like, I've never seen a spot like that. Like, what the fuck was that? Yo, that shit was awesome. That's the only thing I seen on close memory like that that um 
that Shelton Benjamin Shawn Michael super kick. Oh shit. Oh shit. Wait a minute. I remember that shit. They flew across the ring and caught that nigga with that super kick in the air. Yes, that shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. I didn't see that one. I just <laughs> that shit was fucking no mutual lick. <laughs> Yeah, shit like if Rhino and Roman Reigns speared each and Goldberg speared each other or something like it was like totally, <laughs> what the fuck y'all just did that to each other <laughs> and like and it was one of them it was one of them hits like when you heard it you could see their body like they didn't smack their body and make it like no nah, that was a legit like oh your chest is lit right now nigga mm-hmm. both of y'all on fire. Oh yeah, y'all hit each other for like that's I was like, oh, this nigga for real wrestling. Uh-huh. Playing. All right. I will get that to these niggas. They goofy as fuck. But uh-huh. when they do an endeavor, they like they don't be they don't be playing around. They actually do do the due dil- diligence. They give you a show. At it. They give you your money's worth. They not out there like, oh, I'm fucking around and I'm not training for real. Like they actually put their effort in to like try to be good at the shit. So I, I give them respect on that. Like they're not <clears throat> Trying to short sell anybody, so but, the alley. yeah, like I, I can respect anybody that say, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm do this, but I'm gonna also try to be really good at it." If you're gonna do something, be good at it. Shit, don't do it and be half ass. That's gonna give a motherfucker reason to talk about you. A lot of people would do that, though. You know what I'm saying? Like you would have a lot of artists that would be like a YouTube star or something, they'd just make the crossover just to get the clout off of it or the quick bag, but maybe not necessarily put the time and effort in to get great at the thing before they present it to the man. These dudes actually, like, the, the Paul dude, he actually got a nice little combo as far as his, like, main knockout uh, combination. He got decent uh, striking power. Like, if he continue to work at it, like, I ain't saying he gonna be like Sugar Ray Leonard, but he can make a career out of being a decent boxer. You feel what I'm saying? And I didn't expect that. I thought he was gonna be like a flash in the pan, one of these celebrities that, you know, gas the fuck out and, all right, we, we see you next time. You got to you got your bag, make do. But no, nah, like I can actually see him having a career. Same with the with the brother that's wrestling. Like I thought he was gonna be like a novelty. Like we bring him out to get the, the you know WWE try to get the little ticket sales real quick off of him, get the pay per view or whatever, and then we gone. But uh-huh. well, we got to go. Yeah, that nigga can go. Like, he's nice, like, he, like he is actually a nice addition to the cruiserweight ranks. Like I can see him having some decent battles with a lot of the cruiserweight uh, division, especially on NXT or some shit like. No, nah, I think I think with um with Luke Paul is it Luke Paul or Jake Paul? I think it's Jake Paul. Jake Paul. What are they name? Is, is Logan. 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 Logan and Logan Jake. Paul. Yeah. Logan Paul. All right. I think with him, him being on WWE and him <laughs> obviously like, like talking to Triple H and stuff. I think anytime he's coming out, he's coming out. He's coming out like like how Brock used to, or whatever. It's just special events. It's just big. Things. I don't think he's gonna actually be part of the like normal everyday roster like that. I don't think it, I don't think I'm not mad at it. So yeah. I would take him out for the next like year or two, let him like develop, uh-huh. keep popping out and showing up better and better each time, and then become a part of the main roster. Like when the uh-huh. when the, when like because I'm telling you, if you keep popping him out of these pay per views and he have really dope spots and great matches with like some respectable wrestlers. The people gonna start fucking with it, and they gonna be like, "All right, well, we want to see this nigga more," and he gonna end up. And then when you do release him on the main roster, now you got like a legit starter ad as opposed to yeah, it'll be a general you know, that is build instead of you know what I'm saying yeah, you got time to gradually see him get better as opposed to watching him week to week and just keep pulling out his laws every week, and then he yeah turn out yeah yeah. But uh, man, so far each match that he's had, they've been real clean. No, nah, hella clean. Hella, hella clean. Like he's he's not, not botching shit. He, he's on time. He's he's doing moves that make sense. He he's doing a decent job of selling shit. Like, and a lot of times that's what I watch. Like I, I know you can do the physicality shit, but can you act and tell the story in the ring? Can you remember that oh your leg got worked on in the beginning of the match? So at the end of the match, why would you be walking normally? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a little shit like that uh, to me that like make 
the difference between like I'm just watching niggas do gymnastics or I'm watching niggas actually have a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> True. I think True. at some point, like it would be good for the WWE, like they back offices to have like a lifelong fan who's like a certain age who's seen wrestle wrestling develop throughout the years, be like a um advisor. You feel me? Like a fan type of advisor to give you more input as far as what the fans would want to see. Because it's 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 one thing as a company to put up a performance of what you think the fans are wanting to see and you hopefully it's gonna pass. But coming from someone who's seen wrestling throughout the decades, he had him had him matured and see people come and go, they can give you a different perspective. And as an artist, they should really see that as a key and really hone in on it. That'd be a real good thing business wise for them. Business wise and entertainment wise. We can take them to different different heights. That's what I, I think. I, I think I think the majority of the people that do work there are probably are fans in general. Like, this is a dream thing. job. But this is my thing. Yeah, it's a dream job. But I mean, like, you got to be in, like, so like, once you work in there, now you're in a bubble. You're in a True. bubble of what y'all are working on. So it's easy to lose touch of what the daily consumer. Yeah, like when you got in there, Roman Reigns might have made the most sense. But since then, the fans opinion publicly might have shifted to some up and coming dude and ain't nobody in your writers room paying attention to because he don't fit the narrative that y'all already got scripted for the next six months. So True. now so now you need that voice to like, hey, you need to infuse this dude some way because if not, you're going to lose the populace. And I think a smart way to do it business wise is go ahead and have like a subscription thing where like people can sign up. They pay four ninety nine a month, ten ninety nine a month, whatever it is. Right. But with that, you get exclusive access to like WWE writers and executives that like take your feedback. You get to participate in polls that nobody else sees. You get to participate in focus groups and shit. And they're taking these people <laughs> advice into into uh, consideration. You feel me? And then they're you're able to like actually help shape the narrative that the mass of public sees. Because most people ain't gonna sign up for it. Mm-hmm. Sign up for it, and they ain't gonna even well. access the shit. Because people be forgetting they got subscriptions half the time. So, like, because I'd love to see a a, a a prime sting and a prime undertaker. Right. What? But, but that that a that a so. No, the real problem with that was Sting was so. For one, Sting was worth so much money that WWE didn't want to buy out his contract. That was the main problem when that buyout happened. So many people had these high-priced, overpriced-ass contracts that WWE didn't want to pay. You know, Vince cheap as fuck. And those people weren't about to take a pay cut to come wrestle for you when they can get paid literally for sitting on their ass because their contracts are guaranteed. So it was like, you, it was like it was a weird thing, and then Sting was already so WCW to get him over there. Vince would have had to pay him what he was getting paid and work with him on some shit. And I st- still don't like what they did with Sting when they did bring him in. Like I feel like they Vince, under you, they ain't using correctly. Yeah, I feel like Vince got a bad habit of trying to prove some to people that come from other promotions because he didn't grow them, and it's, instead of capitalizing on their natural fan base that is now being. In- and flux into his, you know what I'm saying, consumer base. Only person like, he didn't do that to was Undertaker. Yeah, but also Undertaker wasn't a star coming from somewhere else. He was a real big. Was yeah, he was just a wrestler. You know what I'm saying? I, I think for Vince, if you are a star that comes from another promotion, it's almost like he got to humble you and make you realize you should have been with him from the beginning or something. I don't know what it is, but it, I feel like he downplayed. Hey. DDP played, but he tried to downplay Booker T, but luckily Booker T just was such a good wrestler and just had such good charisma that at some point it became undeniable. But like most WCW wrestlers, even the NWO, like they, he, it's like, Suck when they came back. put them in weird storylines and situations that kind of demeaned them or like made them look like they was a little lesser than the, the regular WWE wrestlers. Give them real gimmicky. Yeah, and I feel like he did a disservice because there was so many dream matches and shit that could have been set up had he just been like smart enough to have the foresight and not be petty 
and just go ahead and pay these people what they was worth and at the same time be smart enough to go ahead like instead of me putting you in some dumbass storyline where you look crazy you put you in a real storyline that makes sense with like the dude that fans have been waiting to see you go and okay. then you all pay-per-view and capitalize and the, the ticket sales like I can now sell out a Wembley arena and, and break box off his records and all that kind of shit because people have been wanting to see this match for 10 years and now we finally giving it to him. Like Vince, Vince fucked up a lot of money. Like, he made a lot of money, but he fucked up a lot of money that could have been made and he just been smart enough to just check the pulse of the fans. Just, just see what we like. I was going to see Ming, Ming versus Vader. I saw that in WCW. I want to see a WWE. I feel like it would have been something where somebody run in and then the match wouldn't have ended with neither one of them. Like, I don't know. Vince would have found some way to, like, <laughs> throw some say- wrinkle that didn't nobody need. Like, you got two big brawling. Let's let them beat the shit out of each other. That's all we want to see. Like, we want to see Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, too. That's all we need. Give me, like, five minutes of fire. Just beat the fuck out of each other for five minutes, and that's all we need. Throw your finishing moves on each other and kick the shit out of each other. And get out of there. Like, that's all we want. We want to see what's going to happen. You two put these two big, brolic-ass motherfuckers that just be throwing meaty-ass punches at each other. Well, uh, yeah, I think they've got a topic. Uh, no dead air, y'all. No dead air. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first topic I wanted to bring up. <clears throat> excuse me. I rarely read the news, and I'm really involved in the news. But just by chance this week, I was reading the news. I uh, came across Virginia as one of Virginia's newest fucked up laws to me. Um, it was a bill, of course. It just got signed into being a law. Um, it comes into effect July 1st. It gives different uh, different police chiefs in Virginia the 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 ability to set curfews during civil unrest. Now, there's no definition of civil unrest or what should be considered civil unrest in this law. So it leaves it up to each individual chief, basically, to make up their own definition of what they believe civil unrest is, and then and apply this curfew. Um. To me, that seems like a setup because this has got to be summertime. Most of your protests and, and when shit happens, it's during summertime or uh, during the hot months, um, as we've seen in the past few years. Ain't been too many real marches and stuff like that in the when it's cold outside. Um, so I see this as basically a way to cold or dampen down protests, not even the unrest part, but just get people okay. We put, we put this here now. You got to go because we can define civil arrest as anything. I I kind of I got something else on on top of that. Uh, pause, uh, face. <laughs> um, it's summertime, right? Like you said, festivals. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the main festivals that um has been making noise within Virginia, uh, something in the water. You know, that's been having a lot of controversy between Pharrell and, and Virginia Beach and everything. Mm. And the first one was packed. Like, that thing, it, 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 you could barely move through that. Mm. I just, in the way that I've seen the actual nightclub scene in the 757 area and how how they move uh, towards like black owners in in general. I can see how they could use that law in place to try to like shut certain things down in general. You know, it, it it's the the NAACP in Virginia. They 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 tried to get Yunkin to veto it, try to get them to the hold up it, and try to get them to do. Um, just trying to get them to put a definition of what civil unrest was so everybody could be on the same page. But he went ahead and signed it. Um, I'm not going to follow the normal narrative. 
Um, I'm going to try to follow a different narrative on this one. Because the narrative that's been put out in the news, um, of course, the normal Democrat narrative that the law signed by this Republican is basically adding to and will help add to from the school to prison pipeline um, industry. I'm not going to go down that I'm going to say it's going to basically infringe on the rights to protest. Because at a certain point, the police get fed up, as we've seen in the past, when, when there was no violence and the, and the violence was coming from the police. So at what point are, is another person's patience or this old chief's patient in these different jurisdictions that they will be so quick to be like, civil unrest, curfew, in, in effect, and then what? It's become something totally different. I see this law being is it not in the beginning. I don't even see it in the first year. But somewhere in year two, year three of this law being affected, it's gonna come that something's gonna happen. Someone's gonna it's gonna be some bullshit. That a curfew has been affected, or a, 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 a protest where something and that you have an agitator there who's not even a part of the original protest, rest unravels. Curfew there, other bullshit that sh- should not happen. Extra violence because now get to enforce that you should not be out. I get to lock you up for this. So I don't see it as just affecting just people of color. I see it as going to affect everybody because in the most recent and more recent years we've seen uh, I'm going to use my favorite word a cornucopia of out protesting. It's not not just us. We see more people standing in arms with black with, with people of color at these protests. You rattling? So, sure, you may be enhancing the pipeline, but I don't think it's the the normal school to prison pipeline. I think you just trying to you going your numbers gonna go up. Your arrest numbers gonna go up. You might give more more funding to these police departments if the if the rest quotas go up. I can definitely see that because if you're not making a rest, you don't need no money. But if you're making a rest, we can and um, where I'm looking for, we can um reason why we got to give you more money. Right. See these what? chiefs that are gonna in- interact enact. This policy or this law being reelected. I'm rattling. Okay. No, that's not me. I'm, I ain't moving shit. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think this law, uh, a curfew for a grown ass motherfucker, should be in that. Yeah, it, it should be something else. I see it eventually going to go wrong. I I understand the premise of it, but it could have been done differently and it should have been done differently. So I'm just my, myself. I'm waiting for the wrong to happen with this law and wait for a blow up in the news. But hopefully it won't happen no time soon. Okay, um, so okay. question. Okay, um, when you, you say said a question, yes, a few seconds ago. <laughs> all right, so it's a delay, I think. So, uh, all right, so this is the question: When you say the curfew is enacted at moments of civil unrest, that means the curfew is only happening like if they're. You talking about some titties over there? Civil unrest, correct? Would Would you say 
like say the last part again, Tess. I said, can y'all hear me? Yeah, it, it kind of okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so when you say that the curfew was enacted in moments of civil unrest, that means the only time that the curfew is actually the curfew is when there's something that the local government deems as civil unrest, correct? Did Whatever you they dictate is civil unrest. Right, but that's the only time that the curfew is enacted, correct? Yeah. So in other times, the curfew's not there. But as soon as they see something that they feel is civil unrest, that's when it comes into play. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I can roll with that. Oh, yeah. I'm that's all it is. Of the control, but I feel like that's also incumbent upon the people to not do some wild shit. If, if, if some wild shit going on, yeah, definitely, definitely, do do what you got to do. Get the motherfuckers in the house. Get get make it make it safe for motherfuckers. If some wild shit going on, but if motherfuckers are just out there protesting and you just don't like it, no, nah, that's an abuse of power, an abuse of abuse of use of the law. Yeah, but I, I mean, I also feel like all right. So, and this may be my little idealistic thinking. I may be just floating on the power this week, so I'm in a optimistic mode, but. There's nothing that's happened yet. So, like, technically, like, we projecting a, a long-standing thing on something that we don't necessarily know is going to go like that. Probably will. Not saying it won't. But, you know what I mean? Like, let's take the wait-and-see approach before we condemn it, especially if it ain't affecting your everyday life until something happens. You feel what I'm saying? <coughs> See what they actually did as the first civil unrest moment. Let's see what that is. And then we come back and revisit the conversation. And then you may be, you know what I'm saying, spot on, or maybe they did the right thing for you. I actually like did. This shit ain't never gonna affect me because I ain't out the outside the house past a certain damn time. So shit, I'm always in the motherfucking hopper. <laughs> hey. you know I, I, I will say in the um in this perspective. Um, I would like to see that law. I would have liked to see that law in play when that um, craziness happened in Charlottesville that one time when that dude ran through with that charger or whatever. Oh, yeah. Things like that. Yeah. But the curfew wasn't affected because that shit happened during the day. Mm -hmm. Them niggas was out there in broad daylight acting like That's true. So, like, uh, so the curfew, <clears throat> like, that's the thing. You put the curfew in, but even then, like, if these niggas is out there at 9 a.m. in the morning acting like hot ass. Yeah. All you're doing is coming the after effects. Yeah, like, I, I mean. That, I, it did go into the night, though. They cut down some of the burning, you know, and some of the stuff that may happen where people come out at night and be a little more bold. But, like, at the end of the day, if somebody going to wild the fuck out, <clears throat> they're going to do it seen it be like a time of day that do it like you gotta remember the insurrection happened in broad daylight it's sun outside you see these motherfuckers walking like this ain't no nighttime. we in the heat of the night it, it, most of the riots happen in the daytime you people really don't riot and loot most of your yeah. loot let me rephrase that most of your looting happen in the daytime ain't nobody looting with flashlights like the wild shit it goes into the night and it might like it makes it worse because, like, it burns all night, and then you wake up the next day and you see all that the tragedy. But like, usually that shit sparks off and gets heat in the middle of the day, in front of. Everybody. So like, I don't know that the curfew really gonna matter either, and pulling anything either. Like, I think it might it might be financially beneficial for them because they're gonna definitely get some like the arrest and you know the up is the up to those kind of things, but I also think they're going to spend more money than necessary because you're going to still have people out doing what they want to do, and then you got to have way more people on the street than you normally would because people are out there still try, like, trying to book the system. So, like, I think it... I don't have a big problem with it, but I do think in the end it could cause more problems than it could.
think Faith got the point, but I just don't want to necessarily like just say that's what's going to happen because if it don't, you know, God bless. Like, I, I'm trying to think that at some point something will get better and somebody will make a better decision. You feel me? You know, well, I, I, I can feel that. I can, I can definitely deal with the, the optimistic tears. Um, and I can definitely fuck, fuck with that, that idea. Um, hopefully it, it won't go wrong. Hopefully if the curve, hopefully the curfew won't have to be enacted at all. Mm -hmm. And if it is, hopefully it is done justly in the correct situations. So, sure. just like every law that's enacted, hopefully it will be utilized in the correct way. Indeed. Indeed. <clears throat> Indeed. And that's all I have to say about that. Okay, Forrest. You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you know what? I'm Bub Goose. You and on some Forrest Gump shit. We're going right into it then, y'all. It's episode <laughs> one, two, three. One, one, two, three. Uh -huh. okay. We about to go into this week. Good. ABC and fuckery. Back to the middle of the road again. I'm gonna be there too. Pure fuckery. Oh, the, oh man! I gotta figure out a way to remix it. We that, need that. We need that. We need. <laughs> please don't. Please don't sue me. Please. Like, I I wanted to end on that, right? So like, like, but I'm back to the middle of the round again. I'm gonna be there to the end, 100 percent pure fuckery. Fuckery. <laughs> Ass voice, like some weird ass <laughs> crazy shit. Oh, Chris. The same nigga for Shadas. The same yep. dude for Shadas that originally said it. We're gonna start. We're gonna start the fuckery. Y'all know that mean period blood. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. I, I tend to try to forget. <laughs> I punched the shit out of my they call me a bomb. <laughs> just imagine that, you know, like imagine just motherfucking blood, nigga. Every time somebody every time they get mad or whatever, instead of like bumble clock, they just say period blood. I will say that. <laughs> that sounds like some Tourette's. Scared of no woman's period blood though. The bumble clock kind of feel good and the when you all right, that's another story. Go ahead. There you go, snitch. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, grown folk know. Just put a towel down. Well, you know what? Have you listened to that Lil Wayne song yet? Put a towel down. No, no. Um, <laughs> no, can't, <laughs> can't nobody with DMX. Who? It's it's this new song with Lil Wayne and Swiss Beats made the um the the track. He sampled DMX and Lil Wayne's rapping over it. Mm. And he has a line that it, it, it kind of talking about what you were talking about, Tiz. Okay. Because oh, most people folk know you put the towel down. But let me just find the lyrics. I would just matter of fact, yes, that's how we're gonna start the fuckery with the Lil Wayne. Or just wash the shoes afterwards. Yeah, like you just just get that shit in, man. That should be warm as fuck. <laughs> like, like a little extra skeeting. It do. It it do. And it, it, it's like a warm hug. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> baby, I'm snitching myself. Hey, listen, man. They be more passionate during that time of day. It's like, oh, you want me now? You the man? Oh, I'm about to give it up. I feel like they go a little harder. Cause you putting in a little extra time, but I'm just to deal with it. You feel me? This nigga Lil Wayne say, "Stay with your chest, mama. Say less, mama. Wheezy F and the F is for F bomber. Yes, mama, I eat you like Jeff Dahmer. She said she on a period. Let's make a mess, mama. Now that's when I was like, all right. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't talking about that. Yeah, I ain't talking about eating, man. But you know, you know. Right, now we can make a mess any other time. Like, I mean, hey, 
but he he, he goes in in this song. Not in, not in the no, I'm not a vampire. Mm-hmm. That, you know, Lil Wayne always say some you know off the wall shit sometimes on the low. See, that's some pills and shit, man. Make you want to do some shit like that. But he goes in on his own. Where did he start? Uh, sometimes I smile to hide the miles of the road. I can't say it like he. Sometimes I smile to hide the miles of the road travel. Shake my hand and feel like that you touch the stove handle. Holy cow, fuck the cow. I want the whole cattle. Gucci buffs on my eyes look like solar panel. Leave your bitches on their own like the Oprah channel. He said that shit. I was like, yeah, he's back. <laughs> he's back. He's back. I'll leave the bitches on the own like the Oprah channel. Okay. Too much battle rap. Huh? Some of yeah. that, yeah, but that last one, man, I, I feel like I've heard that. Or oh, a variation of that. I mean, yeah, if you listen to battle rap, I'm pretty sure they say everything and out of, everything out of the book. Yeah. But just, just, I just appreciate the bars on regular songs. Like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. And ain't nobody else. I'm going to tell you who's real good at that. Mickey Fat and Royce the 5'9 are really good at giving me punchlines that, like, even though it should have been said by now, and it's right there. Mm-hmm. But they find one. I don't know how they keep finding these little ones. They're very good industry rappers that, like, find the... Like Wayne, I think he's also said so many punchlines that he's also said a lot of variation of the shit that he's saying there. And then he's competing with every other rapper that's come after him and for it. Like it's just a lot of it's a lot of punchlines out there. Mm-hmm. So it's very easy right now in rap in general to say a punchline that and it sounds good already. It may have flipped better or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just because of it's so many punchlines out there. Uh-huh. And some of these things, like Oprah's a common thing. So, like, there's been a million flips of own, OWN, uh, Popo, Oprah. Said, like, any Oprah flip you can think of, that shit has been a... Uh-huh. Her, Donald Trump, um, yeah. like... Celebrities, this is like they so saturated in the culture, like it's like. Eh. Mm. But the shit that he was saying before that, like the holy cow, I that I like that. That was from this. <clears throat> no, he he goes in throughout the whole, mm-hmm. the whole song, like the whole song. I just appreciate that. Like the last few times that I have listened to Lil Wayne, it only it, it's been on even on random underground songs. He's actually like he been just giving me the bars. You know what I'm saying? I even on that um on God did I, I to tell you the truth, I kind of like his verse a little bit more than Jay Z's. But when Jay Z's come in, it's like ah, I can't deny Jay Z. Well, Oh, just a little. <laughs> it just depends. I know he mad. I know he mad. He got he. <laughs> this nigga put up his bell, Mister Belvedere pipe. <laughs> like, Excuse me, sir. Violation. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's, I have my moments. I'm like, is Jay? Moment, like, <laughs> he's gonna disagree, but okay. what, what is the bar? That bar that he said, what is the bar that he said? Hey, man. Mm. With that nigga team. And the nigga see the team. See, some, some, because metaphors don't equal up to this real shit, man. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Metaphors versus real shit. It's whatever you like. But I'm always go from, from some shit that uh, we can Google that shit and verify. Shit hard, man. I ain't like- 
I count three <clears throat> and Ree. LeBron's a rock boy for four championships. That nigga didn't even throw his wife in the apartment. God <laughs> didn't see what he made me. <laughs> yeah, he did. He made you a gremlin looking like this. With the odds stacked against me, I could crack Da Vinci. I know only God can judge me. <laughs> only God can judge us. I, I say that for Brittany. That's what she is. I don't know. I just like. I just liked it. Oh man! And then he goes say Ross. Ah! Ross, Ross, Ross. I, and Ross, Ross flowed on the track. Had Ross, had Ross, had that been Ross's song, great. I himself cool. Oh, as soon as he's 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 me, Ross, like we not for setting the ambiance. Like he set the mood, but that nigga, that nigga became, that nigga became uh afterthought. When it was called the Jamie Fox on the Jamie Fox show, atmosphere. <clears throat> nigga became atmosphere, atmosphere, real fast. Atmosphere, atmosphere joints. Atmosphere. Yeah. Atmosphere. John Legend, John Legend, and the nigga Vory had more of an impact on that song than than uh, Rick Ross. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, God, 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 yeah. <laughs> Did it? God did. Yeah. So after I do something, somebody else supposed to say something. Do something, y'all. We pod. Well, on the rest. I, I wait for the. I tell him still on the fuck After this, we are. But I mean, fuckery. Yeah. Hey, don't just let it sit. Well, the fuckery is. is I got uh, it. I make it make work. It, the fuckery is starting off, um, and. A state that is normally it has high ranks in the fuckery over the past few years. We we're going. To bed. Yep. Oh yeah. hell! <clears throat> oh hell! I knew it. Too, you said the history, boy. Yep, Jesus. yep. It, it got so bad. Faith went back to his um avatar. <laughs> you know how he feel about Florida. He did it so that face would be right Damn there. Right. Look at that face. That face looked like. That's a cold leather jacket, though. I like it. <laughs> well, anyway, down in Florida. I have no idea. <laughs> what do you call a deer with one eye, with no eyes, and no legs? I still have no idea. His <laughs> <laughs> dad joke. All right. Well, that was a joke, and this is about to be a joke too. Florida couple arrested after planned threesome with woman they invited over turns violent when woman made fun of the couple's genitals. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So she said he had a little dick and she had a sloppy pussy. Pretty much stank, actually, stank pussy. Stank pussy. Yes. Yeah. Police received a complaint from Della Draper, 29. Who claims she was beaten up by a couple? She accepted an invitation. We not, we not even back up to you hear the name Della that we don't think that this name that this whole story not to be really anyway. Like Della, Della, the only good Della in the world is Della Reed. <laughs> that's one of them nineteen thirty. Della, that's that's some country white girl with black feet, <clears throat> don't wear shoes, that live outside the trailer park that be selling puss for cable bills. Della. Couple to the right. Della. Look at Della. What's his name? Hank? Well, let's find out. All right. <clears throat> Randall. Nah, I don't think it's a Randall. He look like a Randall. Let's see. Uh, Steven Lopez, 31. Steve. Look, look at St Stevie J. Steve. <laughs> and Angela Vasquez, 20. Whoa. Wait. Right. Della. 
playing a threesome encounter at the house. Steven Lopez, 31, met Draper while working as a taxi driver. Taxi driver. <laughs> taxi cab confessions. Lord. He was in an open relationship with Angela Vasquez, 20, and invited Draper over to have sex with him. According to the- I ain't even know they still had cab. I thought that was a thing of the past because of Uber and Lyft and all of these other ride share services. I did not think they still had taxes. <coughs> they still got some. Uh, Draper told police Vasquez uh, tried to dominate her sexually inside the house. The couple ended up asking Draper to leave the house, but she went to the couch instead and refused to leave. Lopez and Vasquez uh, told the police. Wait, where's the part where they talk all disrespectful? All right. Uh, <laughs> during the sexual encounter, Vasquez claims Draper became very disrespectful toward the couple. She told the police she <laughs> she told Stephen he had a little dick and his wife had a stank pussy. Yep. <sighs> well, yeah, doesn't get you beat up at somebody else. Lopez and Vasquez said Draper got into her car and reversed toward where the couple was standing, striking back Vasquez on the leg. Damn. Lopez told police he then picked up a cinder block and threw at the back window of the car. Boy, Wait, this ain't the beginning of it. All right. <laughs> this ain't the beginning of it. <laughs> Draper said Lopez did grab her by her hair and threw her against the wall, and the pair right. threw her outside. And uh-huh. Draper <laughs> says Vasquez then repeatedly punched her, and that's when uh, Draper got into her car and reversed into the couple, uh, striking Vasquez on the leg, and uh, Lopez threw the center block. <clears throat> she left the house in the car and parked down the street. Lopez went running after her but she left before he reached the car. Lopez was charged with the felony of throwing a deadly missile. <laughs> they turned the cinder block into a missile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Vasquez was charged with battery. Draper was not arrested, but two days later, she was arrested for a separate incident, which included hitting a man in the face with a glass base woo, filled with a, with gravel and rocks. That's that's damn near a cinder block. Question. <clears throat> the victim was identified by police as the father of her children. All right. So is so is her vase a deadly missile, and is Craig's brick that he hit Debo with a deadly missile? I think it'll be a certain way. Dependent. Um. Yeah. Well, in Florida, it would be at least. So I'm about to knock the shit off about it. I ain't even I, know I, the thing. I didn't, I didn't had no idea. I think they should have said projectile, but that's pretty much the same as that. Should sound like you a terrorist. Yeah, I mean it was pretty terrible that day, but coming to the ring, deadly missiles. That sound like a movie scene. Bitch throwing the cinder blocks. Pause. Porn name. <laughs> well, in the ring, getting out of the ring. I'm like, I'm just... Oh, shit. Bell, he wins. Oh, no, nigga, no, nigga, no, nigga, no, nigga, no, nigga, no. He ain't got to go with this. All right. No chill. No chill, bro. Oh, <laughs> We ain't even about to do that. Nah, bro. We ain't even. We ain't even. We ain't even. See, see, situations like this is the reason why Miami Beach is canceling spring break next year. That and they had a lot of violent gunfights. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Projectile missiles? I was like, what? Mini missiles. Okay, you looped it back around. You got to. We're gonna work on your segue game off here. Cause I was I was over here like Deadly Missile came to the ring. Like, is has a nigga really named Deadly Missile came to the ring down there? Did they have a wrestling match? Speaking of Deadly Missile, that was crazy. Speaking of Deadly Missile, that was crazy. This nigga here. 
Oh my god. All right, Pat. Well, yeah, it's it's gotten so bad this year. I'm glad I left uh, Miami before all this all this shit went down. But um, yeah, uh, the week afterwards, mad shootouts. Um, <clears throat> they are saying that some of the people were like people from Vegas and New Orleans that was in part of it. Uh, weeks of violence and unruly crowds and hundreds of arrests in the city of Miami Beach. So now they're passing proactive measures to end spring break coming 2024. <laughs> this is part of the commission. End spring break there? Yes, in Miami oh. Beach. Close down oh. everything. So <clears throat> need a lot of money because otherwise people will come. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of their money come from tourism during that time of the year. Like, I'm like, you're gonna not let them go to the restaurant? And not let them I think they're probably gonna. <clears throat> I doubt you're gonna turn away all those millions of dollars that they bring in. So where where do you? How do you close down the beaches? See, for me, curfews like, maybe. And the beaches, like who the hell? All right, you got like small percentage of people that's going just for the beach. You close down the beaches, we still out there on the strip. Everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Everywhere the fuck else. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and you can... I was everywhere else. <laughs> but that means you gotta shut down the hotel, you gotta shut down the restaurant, you gotta shut the down Airbnb. You gotta shut down the Airbnbs, you gotta mm-hmm. shut down because people coming. Like it's Miami. Yeah, people that's a lot of revenue you cutting out, man. Spring break. They already bought their ticket. Like you you ain't got enough police to enforce that. Like, so it's like, why you put that out there? Like, all right, I feel you don't want people to we come. Don't believe you need more people. Right. Like, with free, it was a more organized thing. So, like, <clears throat> come to Atlanta and you can be all over the city of Atlanta, but that's going to have the police out more. But it ain't going to be like, like, you can't have freak no more because people used to pile up at Piedmont Park. They can shut off Piedmont Park. But you can still come down here and go to the clubs and all that shit, and they can't really do shit about it. Uh So, like, it's like spring break in Miami. Like, all right, I can't go on the beach. Cool. I'm going to, I wanted to go to the clubs and the party. Like, if I'm I'm thinking like spring break is like college kids, you 19, 20, 21, you ain't thinking about going down there for the, the, you know, sand and water. You think about going down there to get fucked up and get fucked. I'm thinking they might. They might do it like they do in Virginia Beach, where like you can't just stand around; you got to keep moving. Hey, that's you know what I'm saying. Awesome. Most of them want to walk anyway. Keep they moving, keep moving. They pop them damn things and they get the roll. That's true. And they and they will. Walk. I, I see them at work. They they won't do a whole lot of physical activity, but as far as walking in a straight line back and forth, they will do that all day long and just talk. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes be glazed over, looking crazy, look, looking just like the Walking Dead, and it's shot down here, so it makes sense. But like it, it's that it's safe, so they would be just fine with it. I don't see this stemming any type of an influx of young people coming down there and acting ass. True, you're in a state where people acting ass on a Wednesday, yeah, in the middle of November. And a Tuesday. You tell me spring break, you think you're going to stop? Man, we're going to get the fuck out of here in Florida. You ain't the crazy shit that happens by your own people. How you going to stop people? Yeah, Jim, Minnesota. Uh, What's the other one? It's another crazy ass state. They just be doing like, what the fuck is y'all on? Y'all all right? Hmm. It's one of the, uh, New Hampshire or Maine. It's one of them. New Mexico, yeah. Like they just Arizona. Okay. No, it's it's a New England state that I'm thinking. It's either Maine or New Hampshire. It's one of them. Like it's it's like so high that no most people don't ever really. <coughs> you only think about Vermont. it when about trying to name all it. It might be. It's one of them three. It's like that's them top three. That's like oh you up there. I think I was up there until I actually like started trying to name all the states. Rhode Island. Connecticut, Massachusetts. I, I've already you just name it everything. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> oh, right, go the whole East Coast. 
Oregon. Philadelphia. New York. Hey. Philadelphia. Uh, hello. D.C. What's this? No. Like, what are we doing? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I'll make it a point. You just come to this. Yeah. And West Virginia, too. North Dakota. Montana. All right. Yeah, they, those are states. <laughs> I got to do what I'm... I mean, they're in New England, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, but I'd already told this one of the... And then you just kept going. I'm like, oh, it's one of them three. The, the top one. Not the, you getting close to the damn, you know, mid-Atlantic. You know, this is basketball in college. You know, you, you get close to the VAC. Got to go back up top a little bit. I have no way to segue <laughs> New England. Well, just this, I mean, with but, um, yeah, um, Jonathan Majors uh, currently has been under fire for supposed Same. alleged assault charges. <clears throat> I seem. It seems as if yeah. as soon as it started trending, they s- started sweeping that shit under the the rug pretty quick. Who is he here? Uh, his wife. He's married. I believe so. His uh, some white lady. Uh... <laughs> I didn't even know he was married. <clears throat> yeah, he's married. Yeah, me there. All right. Oh, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah, but then it's like now I think there she's actually redacting what she's saying and like say, hey, that was that wasn't an attack or anything like that, pretty much. But as soon as it became like news, it was like they had the 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 backup story right behind it like no nah, this wasn't him or whatever it, i mean it wasn't it, it it was involving him but no he didn't actually do that but then it was actually people as soon as that news came out that he had an assault charge or he was arrested for assault charge then you had all the everybody saying well you know he has a history of doing that and i was like no one knows that he has a history but <clears throat> y'all but who knows if y'all are telling the damn truth? And who are y'all that's saying that he has a history? Yeah, I didn't even know he had a wife. So I, I definitely, he was in a mingle to me. He just came out of nowhere. Was mm-hmm. I was like, all right, do that. And then he was in, you know, other shit. I was like, all right. I feel like, um, <laughs> who said this? You know, he's like the the biggest, the newest, like, black star now, pretty much. I mean, with him being basically the the new villain for the next phase of Marvel movies, and then Creed 3 doing as great as as it has been doing, pretty much. Like, that's a lot of money back in him. Yeah. This is true. That is a whole lot of money, and just how fast they swept this under the rug shows me how much money is back in Jonathan Major. Because it's back to that one—I forgot what comedian said this, but they say if you, you know, if you're big, you're a big superstar in Hollywood, and you're black, you're not gonna, you ain't gonna be able to leave out clean. There's gonna be some kind of dirt. They put on. Man, I think too, yo. Alright, this can be something But like I'm I think I'm getting old for like blaming shit on the other elite other than people personally. You chose that guy. That's the woman you chose to spend your time with. And at and at some point I can guarantee you if she acted out like this and she throwing this shit around, it was a red flag that was similar to just before that that you ignored. Because you liked the pussy, or you thought she was bad, or she whatever else, but like, nah. Because it's a it's a bunch of other black actors. Like, you ain't hearing this shit about Idris Elba. 
You ain't hearing this shit about uh Denzel Washington after all these years. Uh-huh. So like for it to be coming out about you, like it's something that it's a decision that you made, bro. Like even Michael B. Jordan, the dude that's in the movie with you, that's also the biggest black star right now. Like he he right there neck and neck with you. His ass ain't we ain't hearing this about him. So like at the end of the day, like I also think it comes down to like some personal accountability. Like you think about how many situations we've all been in, right? Mm-hmm. And out of all of the people that we've hung out with over the years, how many of them have been involved in some shit where they've been accused of some sexual assault or some some wild shit like that, right? And you think about that, and you think about all of the similarities between everybody that we hung with. Why ain't nobody else get that same like? Yeah, or having weird shit put on you, or shit, like it may not be you did something, but there's a decision you made that led to that because everybody else around you ain't having that same issue, and they're just as famous. They're just they got just as much to lose. Like Michael B. Jordan, the only thing we got on him is that he broke up with a, his ex girlfriend. Um, no, that was wasn't that Lori Harvey? What I'm saying, but that's it. Like that, she broke that, up with him. So, <laughs> but but it ain't. What, what scandal do we got on this? Nothing. And they ain't bringing like white girls too. When you ain't living a life that scan that that they got scandal, you ain't about to get caught up in one. But if you start hanging with a woman that's crazy, or you making bad decisions in your personal decisions as far as your business, <laughs> or whatever the case may be, like you gonna open that shit up to like, all right, you might be accused of some wild shit because you picked this girl that you knew was crazy. And even if you didn't do it, like you fuck with scandalous women, you get scandals. Oh, for shit. Because I'm going to tell you, crazy don't pop up. Crazy got precursors. Uh, that's true. <clears throat> you you kind of see it. You just choose to or choose not to pay attention to it. You feel me? And especially when it comes to love a lot of times or uh, being infatuated with the opposite sex. You know what I'm saying? You, you see a woman and she bad. She got the best food you ever had. She, you know what I'm saying? She sound good. She, she, all your friends hyping you up. Then next thing you know, the woman crazy as fuck, but she was crazy back then. Like, she did some little slick shit that was like, but when she now go ballistic crazy, like, you, you ignored the little crazy. Well, that's on you. Eat that shit. Shut up. Like, I don't want to hear it no more. Like, End of the day, like I'm tired of grown folks want sympathy for like, like at the end of the day, and this is how I feel truly. There's nobody out here like whining and crying about my issues because of decisions that I made. So I ain't got time to keep whining. Like, yo, that nigga, he he picked a wild a wild woman for whatever reason he picked her, and then he stuck with it after all whatever red flags. I'm telling you, that type of trait, like. Not mentally ill, like go to the hospital with Facebook type, you know, like, where you are actually diagnosed with some wild shit. I'm talking about like this crazy way, like you're acting out of that, like, just being a big ass thing. That's really what it is. You know what I mean? Like that shit don't pop up out of nowhere. That shit got precursed. Like you see that coming. Like, oh, 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 oh. and then you tell your man, no, it's all good. Cause she, she fine as hell. Man, fuck that. It ain't that much fun in the world. It ain't that much exotic in the world. It ain't that much. Let me try this in the world. It ain't that much. She stimulate my mind. Like if, if you see the crazy precursors, leave that shit alone. Uh-huh. You do? So yeah, man, I ain't about to feel sorry. You got a million dollars to fight the court case, and at the end of the day, you picked her for whatever reason. You picked her. That was that was your bait. If Pat was with Pat stands correct. Past bay, that was your wife. You took her down the aisle with the red flag. Nick, oh, I man. believe it also said he was the one that actually called the police too. But somehow he got arrested. <clears throat> You're a 200 and some pound black man. Yoke out of your mind for this road. Which means you, when the police arrive, all they see is a big ass black dude and a lady. Who you think they think? 
and you're probably annoyed as fuck or angry because you've been arguing with her. So now you 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 got perturbed enough to call the damn police. So now you're already assaulted. So now you look crazy as fuck, and you big and brawling as hell. And then you got this little lady over here who, of course, as soon as the police pull up, is gonna play the victim. Even if she was beating the shit out of you right before that, she gonna play the victim when they pull up. So now you fuck. Like it ain't no. Like when you come to them type of arguments, man, it ain't no winning for you. Ain't no calling the police and you, they, they gonna come and do the right thing. This ain't a spike Lee joint. Man, they pulling up. They gonna see black man, little woman. Even if she a black woman, they just see big black man. Like being a black man is a burden because of that. Like you're always seen as a threat to somebody else, even if you're not doing anything. You could be the most humble, upstanding man, and it happens all the time where black men get like somewhere prosecuted because they was in the wrong place. Now, granted, they was in the wrong place, but you got to know that, like uh-huh. I, everywhere, because I know that there's a certain stigma on me. So, like, I'm very careful about where I go, who I hang with, where I'm doing, because I know that at any point I could be mischaracterized. But that's a decision you got to make. And that may come from, you know, you might be naive because nothing's ever happened. But I think living the life that we've lived, like, we've kind of been through a lot. So, like, we've seen what happens when you're in certain situations and you may not be doing anything. And now you're caught up in the bullshit. Yep, that's me. That's my life. So I think um, when it comes to these type of situations, that may be a thing. Maybe he was naive and just thought, you know, but like as a as a man, you gotta look out for women with these precursors of like, all right, this is gonna be some shit that's gonna be a problem. You feel? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that actually is a good segue into my uh topic for the week, y'all. Uh, I wanna know, like, all right, so you know, you got this type of situation. She's accusing him or whatever. But what is the worst thing a woman can do to ruin their relationship with a man or make them an undateable woman? Um, repeat that question for me one more time. I heard uh, you clearly, but I just wanted you to repeat it one time for me so I can register so I can answer the way I need to. No, I got you. I got you. So I'm going to uh, set it back up and I'm going to uh, actually get a premise for the audience because I forgot to do that because I, I know they'll be like, well, why is he bringing it up? All right. So, all right. So the reason I'm bringing it up is like I, I was, I've been watching a lot of YouTube um, like podcasts. And I think a lot of people talking about how like modern women are single at rates that are higher than ever, which means they're basically women are opting out of marriage. So it made me ask this question, Faith. What is the worst thing that women can do to ruin their relationship with men or make them an undateable woman? Um, let a motherfucker find a condom in your pussy. Yep, that would do it. Yep. Yeah, that's that's it. That's that's. I don't think you can tie that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. I was. I was gonna say. Uh... Oh man. Um. Yeah. 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 I... So I was thinking more alone. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of like, you know, being uh for me personally, the worst thing a woman can do. Uh, and I, I, you know, I never experienced uh, such an extreme necessarily in my database. But I think being an argumentative or disagreeable. And when I say that, a lot of times people hear disagreeable and they think like, all right, you got to just agree with it. I, I more mean like you're looking to argue for the sake of arguing. Like you're just trying to be contrarian. And I find that a lot of women feel like to be strong, they got to like debate men or like assert their dominance in moments where it's like, I, I ain't looking to beat with you or argue with you about this point. I just talk. I'm just trying to relax and feel. 
I ain't looking for all that. And I feel like when you see that in a woman, even in public, even if you're not dating them yet, if you see that, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, you doing too much. I'm good. And they can be bad, but it's like they automatically get degraded like a few points just because like I can't see myself listening to that and having to deal with that all day every day. Like that's gonna be annoying. Oh. 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 Definitely, I would, I say I definitely agree with that. I would also say. Well, I kind of feel like what I'm about to say actually goes along with what you already said, but being okay, that threw me off, but just trying to find (laughs) trying to find every way to embarrass the man or demasculate the man or in, in public to make them seem like they're like the head of everybody like they're the one in charge that's the one thing and and insulting intelligence which also goes along with that yo when I saw it's a video that it's a dude uh, that, it's a dude and his girl they're getting on a plane and I guess you know he's a he looks like an everyday working man he don't look like he's no rich dude and, you know what I mean just a regular guy but he's taking her somewhere, obviously, where you got to get on a plane to go. So, obviously, he's took some time and effort and spent some money on it, right? Which is probably a substantial fee for him coming out of his paycheck. So, he sacrificed for her. And she's on there. The video is heard, like, doing a thing where she's going through, like, yeah, y'all. You know, I thought we were going to be in first class, but he got me in cold, y'all. <laughs> you know? And she's like... Counting this dude, and he just behind her with the neck pillow around his neck, like this. And you can see his whole soul just being like his his little light just dwindling in front of the camera. You feel me? And I feel a lot of women feel like to be funny or to like show that they are whatever that they gotta compete with. It's like I they see a lot of women nowadays competing with men as opposed to being with. Like you ain't. Yeah. We are not fighting with each other. We working together. We we can fight a situation or somehow in the world together, but we are not fighting each other. Like what what are you doing? Like why do you want to be for me about little shit? So so the way I said that word, I don't you, want nobody. I gotta fight against. I'm trying to have somebody I can fight with. Bro, when you look at a lot of men's like surveys and shit, when they do these little polls of men, like one of the number one things men want is just that peace, like. I don't think women understand how much men in general, but a black man especially, because I'm going to speak from all perspective, because that's what we are. Like, it's a lot of pressure just to be us. Like, we're dealing with women who want us to be nurturers all of a sudden, because now men got to be emotional. All right? And then on top of that, we got to be the provider. But you want us to let you provide too. So we got to be a team player. But at the same time, we got to lead. But you don't want us to be a boss. And then on top of that, we got the boss at our job and on our back. We got the stigma of being a black man. So everywhere we go, we got to deal with the fact that like we got to try to make sure that we're not being too much of a black man that we end up in jail before we can get home. Then we got to deal with the fact that you got young folk out here that's losing their minds, so now we got to deal with the fact that we might have to knock a nigga the fuck out or get in a shootout at the gas station because this nigga want to act stupid, and I don't even know this. And then I'm coming home, and then I don't work my ass off because usually black men, the, the average black man that I know, even like even the crackheads, yo, it's crazy. They work their ass off. Like, they really put, like, when I'm talking about sweat equity in their job, like they really be like they don't be at work bullshit. They in there like hustling, getting it in. They trying to really push and try to get to a next level or something. So like when you get home, the last thing I want to do after fighting all day with all of this is come home and then fight you. And you supposed to be the woman that's solved and making me feel good. And we supposed to be able to connect. And I'm supposed to be able to like look at you like, all right, you my ah oh, moment. 
and then I get in and you fussing about some dishes or, or a toilet seat or a goddamn trash or some dumb shit that ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but you just felt like picking an argument because you was upset because Cheryl let your job to piss you off, so now you want to just take it out on the world. Sure, sure, kiss my ass. Yeah, fuck her ass, sir. Like, peace, man. Come home, come home, fuck with me because Cheryl will piss you off. Make mm -hmm. me go to your job and slap Cheryl my goddamn self to serve my peace. You and know? Big Shirley. Because at the end of the day, like, it goes like, just got to get me and Pete. If, if, a, if a woman gives man Pete, where he ain't got to worry about her out here in the street, like, he, he can just come home and just know that, like, House taking care of me and her good. She ain't doing no wild shit that's gonna have me looking crazy in the streets. She ain't about to be fussing at me about no wild shit. If she do have a disagreement with me, it's a talk like, hey, can you do this the next time? Like, you know what I mean? Just normal talk. Like, because for most men, like, it ain't usually it ain't a, a malicious thing of I'm trying to be an asshole about whatever it is that you're upset about. It's usually like, I didn't know, I just didn't think. Like, it, it's like just, hey, I'm hustling out here, I'm trying to. Do whatever, and I, that slipped my mind. My bad. You know what I mean? It's, it's usually not egregious shit unless you're doing talking about like cheating shit, and then we talking about something else. But I'm talking about like in a normal relationship where both parties are faithful. You're talking about a situation where like usually it's dumb shit. And the man, if, if you just was ask the man, just hey, can you do this? Again? The man got you. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, before that moment, he probably did it. It's just he forgot that time. So give him great. Like everything ain't gotta be a beat. And I find out a lot of modern women that's what they got. Um, and I can't read nobody's mind. <clears throat> Yo. I have not developed philosophy. Communicate. Um the way you communicate or don't communicate as a woman would dictate a lot to a man as far as how he can process it. Like I mean, women out here fucked up. Yeah. Read your mind. And, and it's like men are very direct like we come up so the way women socialize is in a communal system where everybody's empathic and they're going off of each other's feelings and they're you know they, they they're they're dealing with men are very direct because we're dealing with hierarchy system from the day a man is born he's knowing exactly where he fits into the grouping of other men in a small grouping a large grouping the larger grouping the, the world at large like everything in the world shows a man what he is and where he stands. So like by the time a man is a man, he's already he's very much understanding these things. So he ain't got time to be like trying to play guesswork with another man. Like because you play guesswork with another man, that can lead to a physical altercation. And usually like men ain't necessarily looking for that. It's more of a like, all right, if it comes cool, I'm ready for it, but I'm not out here like just walking around like trying to club somebody like an eight. Like, I'm usually just, you know what I mean? So, like, but that's why men talk in very specific language and they try to avoid certain words and they don't just throw around vague statements that can be interpreted 13 different ways by the other dude because they want to be very clear. So, like, if I want to fight you, I want you to know I ain't about to bullshit around. If I don't, though, I ain't about to say some shit that make you think. Is this I'm about to have to, is Wayne Brady about to have to shoot? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it, it's like you gotta. I think women sometimes don't understand that, so they be throwing these vague things out there, or like, and they're expecting you to pick up on like the nuance of what they mean, but it ain't clear. It's like, well, I, the way I interpret it is definitely a way I could, could that they can be interpreted, but if you we don't have a shared understanding, then. How you expect me to follow through on whatever it is that you trying to beat around the bush at? Just, just say it. Just say, hey, can you pick that up? Instead of huffing and puffing and then you're looking crazy and then I'm asking you what's wrong but you're saying nothing wrong but you're acting like something wrong and then you being petty and you putting stuff on the ground and then it, it's just a weird like, it's a whole bunch of shit that ain't gotta be there but, and you could have just said can you grab that? Okay. And then we done and we done went on and watched our shows together and cuddled and all that shit. You feel like, oh. mm -hmm. oh. now talking about that women should not. What is the top thing you feel that women should do if they want to get a man or keep the man that they're currently with? 
Mm. Learn how to cook. Food the savage beast with food. Oh, yeah. Learn positive reinforcement. Okay. If you want something done, try, you know, other ways of communication, other ways of just of um, getting your point across without having the whole fucking TikTok video about it. Mm. Mm. I say that. Oh, go ahead. Keep go ahead. The social media away. Yeah, I, there you go. Get them a mouth. I would definitely parrot that the social media thing. I think that that has become a a real issue, and I mean, like, not even from the creation aspect, like. Obviously, you know, the thirst trap pictures and the wild shit like that is a problem. But I would even say, like, the the consumption of it, because it leads women to create these false realities that are not the everyday life. Like, you're looking at these other women, like, living with these millionaires and billionaires, but the average man you're going to meet is not going to be that in your life. So if you Hell can't... No what your lifestyle is going to look like, then you're going to keep falling up short. Or they see somebody else with this one thing that their relationship ain't got, but they don't realize that that's these people posting their best versions of their relationship. You don't see that this nigga's beating the fuck out of her behind the scenes. So then you're looking for a nigga like that because of this one thing, but your dude was doing these other nine, ten things that you like, but because of that one thing that you keep seeing, now it's the fuck with your brain, and now you leave him Go get a nigga like this other nigga you saw on Instagram, that nigga beating the shit out of you. Like, it's like, it's a, it, it, social media is just like not good for a relationship if you want to be long term because it, it creates a lot of, all, it has you living in an alternate reality when, in, in fact, your actual reality is what you need to deal with because that's what's going to affect you on a day to day basis. So, yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all preaching the good word on that. But I was gonna also say too, man. Uh, one thing that women should do is definitely be supportive. And when I say be supportive, I mean in a very specific way. Like a man's status is kind of his calling card to the world. It's the way he's able to initiate with the world and enact certain privileges from it and leverage certain situations to bend to his benefit. Right. So, like. At all times, men are trying to increase their status, whether it be through the woman they with and that being like oh, a status symbol or whether their car, their job, their uh, income, their their cachet and respect around their town, their ability to their, their position in a certain group. You see what I'm saying? Like it's always like I'm trying to establish myself in this hierarchy of other men. So. Women should be supportive by like making sure for one they stay standard free so a man shouldn't have his name tarnished by being with you. It shouldn't be, oh, all of a sudden you were the town hoe and now you just telling me so now my dudes been laughing at me, but I didn't know, so now my status dropped in this grouping. Or it shouldn't be you out here blowing all my bread, so now I'm looking crazy in these streets and people seeing you do that and now they looking at me like a simp. So now my status dropped. Or you're my business partner as well, and you're fucking up the business, so now you're making the business look bad, so now my status, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, men just don't want that status to drop, so when the woman support, you should always be doing things that builds up the man's brand and public image. So, like, keeping yourself up is a good way to do that. When, when, when other men see you, they should see a woman that looks attractive so that that man looks like, oh, he pulled that. I'm talking about that nigga. Right, he, must, he must be doing something that his work. He must be... Must be a player, you know what I'm saying? He must be pushing P as the kids would say. You feel me? So like yeah. pushing P. I think women need to be supportive and like really do like really think about how their actions affect their man's status and like do things that support their man's status growing as opposed to uh drop their value. Hey man, I feel another thing. Um, being able to hold themselves accountable. Amen. Um, I found that I found that a lot of women these days, um, they have no problem holding a man accountable, 
but they fall short when they have to hold themselves accountable. Um, and that, that that's a big thing. I feel like holding yourself accountable really ranks up there. Because if you're able to hold yourself accountable, I know I can trust that the bond we have ain't gonna be. You feel me? It, it ain't gonna be tempted. You hold yourself to a higher esteem when you can hold yourself accountable for something. Your integrity is on a different level. You ain't gonna let yourself fall through yourself slip. So. I definitely think accountability is a huge thing that uh, is often overlooked in both sides of a relationship. Um, I think like <clears throat> you have a lot of young people today that you notice are like it's very hard for them to see that they play a part in their outcome. Like, um, you see a kid get fired and they're confused, but they haven't, they've been hiding in the bathroom at work for like the past four days. So, what, what do you, like, you thought, you don't think that has anything to do with it? You think these people, I find it's a lot of bored a lot of times these days where it's just like, what? what? You don't understand that you played a part in that? What? Oh, oh, I, I'm glad you said that, man. My piece, but, you didn't do nothing in this. It's just me. Both of us in this situation, but it's just me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's a real thing. Like, I, w- I wonder, is it like self reflection These women don't often have to be reflective because there's a lot of nurturing. And I don't want to use the word coddle, but I can't think of a better word to like kind of describe what I'm talking about. It's like, uh, so you did something wrong, so we try to make you feel better about it as opposed to allowing you to sit in that and allowing you to figure out how you don't do that again. Like what? We go. Right, like as opposed to men where it's like, it's usually a penalty for our bad behavior. Like, there's a thing we fuck up. Like, we don't really get the benefit of the doubt a lot, especially growing up. So, like, we kind of get used to, like, oh, if I do something, it's going to be some shit that's going to happen. And then we got this if we willing to take that consequence or not. But we know the consequence is coming because we are we, we're men. You know what I mean? Like so I, I definitely yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, man. Hopefully we've given the women a guy. Oh no, I'm 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 gonna say this. Now this 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 goes for not only young people but older people too. Going back to doubling down on this accountability thing. If there's a rule or there's a law or there's a standard and you go against said rule, said law, or said standard, and then said rule, said law, a said standard is enacted and you have to face consequences from said rule, said law, or said standard, you can't be upset at the fact or the consequence. You knew what the consequence was for your action. The only person you can be upset at is yourself for your original action. Not anyone else who has to carry out the consequences for your action. So many times do we look at the reaction, but we fall short of looking at our own action. Indeed. Women out there, hold yourself accountable. Hold your men accountable too. Indeed. Because not enough of you are doing that right there. Holding your men accountable. Young women, when your man leaves the house and you look at him and you walk and he leaves the house and his ass is out, hold him accountable. Older women, when you know your man going all day and he take his blood pressure medicine, hold his ass accountable. Earl, did you take your pill? Yeah, hey, there you go. <laughs> Hold them accountable. Because just as, as, but at the same token, as accountable as you want to hold him to that standard, hold yourself to the same exact standard and the respect in the relationship will be where it needs to be. It can't be, a t- it can't be tilted where you're holding him to one standard of accountability and your standard of accountability for yourself is much lower. Has to be even here. When, when you were saying uh, set rules, set laws, 
I could have sworn you were about to start singing. We got a lot and a GG. I can't sing it because you know, they, they, people, they don't like it all. But. The fire let the bad. I, I thought he was going that way. Look at a bond when that fire may be me fire make we blunted. He still be dancing to the song, so I ain't <laughs> Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> well, well, when that he said he had the same tone. He okay in it. Okay, was killing it back. Yo, got a dance hall spot for us to hit up too. No oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> gonna be jumping on top of that. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I got man. I told you, man. I'm bored. Hey, I'm just talking about you know the dance hall videos where they be like looking like they doing wrestling moves and shit on the bitch. Keep it. And they fire, let it burn. <laughs> told you, told you, told you, I'm a different Yeah, we celebrate. Maybe I'll hear I can fool with it. I can fool with it. I can fool with it. About to be different too. I'm about to be real, real humble with it. Yeah, we gotta do nothing. You see that joy in my face, man. Get your back. <laughs> that nigga pays going. <laughs> uh, cheek about the bird. All right, but we move. Uh, that was my topic, y'all. Good topic. Yeah, stop smiling, yeah. Oh shit! Any black business, fellas? I'm like, where well, this is going? We about to get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, y'all got a black business or something? Fuck, man. <laughs> what? All right, so no. Um, hey, y'all, man, we the best black business you can support, man. If you want to give us money, man, go to dollar sign partner tiz one. That's dollar sign p o d n a t i z one. Um, on Cash App, you can also subscribe for four ninety nine a month on Anchor or Spotify, um, and become a monthly member. Or you can go to buymeacoffee dot com and donate for as little as a dollar, or become a monthly member as well there and get some back behind the scenes content. Um, yeah, in the next few months, I'm gonna try to revamp that and try to get it set up. But you know, right now we ain't got nobody acting on there. I've never really been wasting my time on you know something that's nobody there. So we still got some content there. If you want to see that content? That, Already there, some behind the scenes performing. But yeah, and then uh, if you want to give us money, and get some back for it. If you want to like get some in your hand, you know, some you can put on. Do hey, hey, how can they do that shit? Nine with this ninety slow, you can what go to where the damn store? What archery clothing got called? <laughs> Archeclothing.com. A R T R E clothing.com. Over here, we don't sell clothing for people, man. Check it out. To the damn only place store. to find, you know it. Only place to find the uh, only partners podcast apparel. The only place to get our trade clothing apparel. The only place. Come check us out, man. Hats, hoodies, pants, slides, towels, pullos. We got it. And if you see AC83 gear, or any of the partners here, anywhere else, being sold anywhere else, you know that's what it is. So and uh, man, yeah, uh, after you've done all that, you know, you supported the podcast, but then you want to just contact us, shoot the shit with us, give us podcast topics. How can you reach us? At some POD, no. Got that wrong. At sign T H E P O D N A S. That's at sign T H E P O D N A S. That's the Twitter, the Twitch, the TikTok, and the Instagram. And on Facebook, it's Tiz Face Pat, all the podcasts. Holla. Thank y'all for joining us this week. Uh, 
I feel like we have some really good uh, topics to dig into this week. Uh, please sound off in the comments. Please let us know what you thought about, you know, uh, the curfew laws. Uh, do you think that's an overstep of power? Um, let us know what you thought about the good and fuckery. Uh, what the fuck is Della doing? Um, let us know what do you think are the main reasons, the main things that women can and cannot do to make themselves dateable or, you know, keep their relationships out here. Uh, I think the number one thing I said was the best. Accountability. Definitely do not do the first thing that they said. Uh, uh, no condom. Man, you don't even want to think about it. You know what? Have a great week, everybody. Y'all hey. be uh, we going to end <laughs> the way we started. Uh, we hope y'all have a great and amazing week. We hope that y'all are truly blessed. And as always, man, I have been one third of the pod. Your boy Tiz. And I'm along with of the third of the partners, the Padawan here, and I'm along with Dramatic Hawk. Face in the place, man. We done finished the race first again. Thank you for coming here. Could have been anywhere else, but you spend your time with us. Continue to do the same thing next week, man. Peace out. What up, baby? Hey, mother. Hey, mother.